Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch Fire Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do a brand introduction for Glass House Fragrances, as well as an in-depth sniff candle review of two of their most popular fragrances, which we'll get to in a moment. But first wanted to share, the mission at Touch Fire Twice is to share my love and passion for home fragrance as an enthusiast, an educator, a reviewer, to inspire you to increase your own knowledge and understanding of home fragrance, ultimately enhancing the memories that you build and cherish. A couple of different ways I go about doing that. First is in-depth sniff comparison reviews, where I sort of break down a fragrance, analyze it, what are the notes, what is the perfumer trying to evoke, what are, is the brand selling this as, what do I think it smells like, do I think it smells like what they're saying, is it something different, what do I get out of the fragrance, dig deep into the notes, what does this note mean, what is that, does it mean this, does it mean that, so really learn together on exploring top, middle, and bottom notes of a fine home fragrance to really understand how is it built, what are the notes, what do they mean, so that when we're looking at other fragrances, whether we're sniffing them in person or purchasing them elsewhere, we can understand a little bit of what to expect and, and really what goes into the entire build of a home fragrance. Within that, I also will talk about a candle's performance. That's very important. So the wicks, the wax, the fragrance formulation. So we can talk about the performance, the burn performance, the throw, the projection, the strength, how a candle performs is obviously very important to get that scent into the air, into our noses. And then another way that I do that is I take all that and then add on to that an in-depth sniff comparison review. And so I will often compare fragrances and candles to candles that you may already know, you may already own. And I can say, oh, it's really the vanilla is like the, the vanilla in this candle, or the pear has nothing to do with this pear, or the labdomum that you get from that candle is really similar to what you're getting in this one. To really try to build that scent in your mind, to have a better understanding, not just do I like it or what don't I like about it, but what does it actually smell like? And is that something that maybe you would enjoy? And with that, I also will do some other types of videos along the way, which you can certainly check out in my history. And one of those is a brand introduction video. So in my own fragrance journey, I've been exploring a lot of brands beyond sort of where I started years ago. When I come across brands that are new to me and I'm experiencing, I like to dig a little deeper into what is the brand, what do they stand for, what is their product offering, and of course, do a review of some of their fragrances as well. And so that's what I'm doing today for Glass House Fragrances. If you watched my Christmas in July luxury candle haul, you can watch that here if you haven't. I talked a bit about Glass House Fragrances in that because my first purchases with Glass House were in that. So I did a Christmas morning candle as well as a mini pack trio of their two ounce candles from the holiday collection from last year. And I was introduced to Glass House Fragrances from a couple of pals over on Instagram, Mags Loves Candles and Just Chante. Check them out if you don't already follow them. They talked a lot about Glass House Fragrances. Uh, Mags Loves Candles actually is located in Australia where the brand launched and she's a huge fan of it and she talked so wonderfully about the fragrances that really needed to give it a shot and was happy to find that with my Christmas in July haul. Love those. I'll be doing in-depth sniff comparison reviews on those later in the year. We can check out my first impressions in the Christmas in July video. And after that video, I was chatting on Instagram with Nicole Eccles, the CEO and co-founder of Glasshouse Fragrances, and she offered to send me these two fragrances to review for you all. So we'll get into that in a moment. But before we do that, I just want to talk a bit about the brand since, especially if you're in the US, it is likely new to you. Now, if you're watching in Australia, Glasshouse Fragrances, everyone knows what it is, has it in their home. But if you're in the US, it is actually newly launched here, so it may be new to you. So Glasshouse Fragrances, it's an upmarket brand, was launched in 2005 by Nicole Eccles. Nicole worked in the cosmetics industry in New York City, relocated to California, and then ended up relocating to Sydney, Australia. And when she got there, she realized there really was a gap in the market in the home fragrance and fine home fragrance category. And so she decided that there was the gap and she wanted to fill it. And so she really started from scratch to learn how to build a fine home fragrance brand, bringing triple scented candles to the market there. They started first with candles and home fragrance, and she really went all in creating her own factories. And now she's able to offer a wider product offering, eau de parfums, body lotion, body bars, hand wash, hand creams, really getting a, a full product spectrum, which is really nice to see when you have these fine fragrances. You might as well put them in other products to enjoy throughout the day in different ways. To create the fragrances, Nicole and her team, they partner with world-class perfumers. So they really will take you know a year, year and a half to develop a scent, the idea, what are you trying to evoke, whether it's a place or it is an item or it is an experience, and partnering with those master perfumers to land what is the perfect top, middle, bottom notes to really land what they were going for with their vision. And then of course, testing out the wicks, the wax, the blend to make sure that it is going to be the ideal scent experience when you get it home as well. 
Now, as far as the candles, they are cotton wicks, they're a soy wax blend, and some of the highest fragrance loads in the industry. She often refers to it as triple scented because they really put in above and beyond concentrations of fragrance oils so that you're going to get a healthy throw. There are three primary sizes that Glass House has. There is the traditional 13.4 ounce two wick candle, burns for about 65 hours, has a retail of 50 US dollars. Then you go smaller, you've got the 2.1 ounce, kind of your votive size candle, single wick, burns for 20 hours, retails for $20. And then the big whammy for some of those really popular fragrances, you've got a 26.8 ounce triple wick, and that is gonna burn for 100 hours and retails for $90. So really, when you get into that upmarket luxury fragrance brand, those are really healthy price ranges on par with your Nest, your Apothecies. We're going to deliver those elevated experiences. And as far as where they're sold in the US, again, it is a newly launched within the past year or so brand, but currently in Saks, CO Bigelow, Neiman Marcus, many boutiques. They did a launch recently on HSN, Home Shopping Network. And of course, you can get them from the Glass House Fragrances US website as well. So that is Glass House Fragrances in a nutshell. Now getting into the actual candles, the two that I'm going to sniff and review today, we've got Lost in Amalfi and Ataha A Affair. This is really fun where Nicole said that these are two of the top selling fragrances, the Ataha'a Affair, top selling fragrance in Australia, and Lost in Amalfi, top selling fragrance here in the US. So kind of interesting to see just consumers, the market, the demographics, what our noses and scent experiences have us leaning towards in Australia and here in the US. So we'll dig into these. I want to talk a bit about, again, just the product experience, nice soft touch box. And even in the small trio I had here, not only soft touch boxes, but there's kind of metallic leaf, there's soft touch, there's a velveteen. So really elevated unboxing experience, which for luxury fragrance, you want that elevated experience from start to finish. Importantly, when it comes to the notes, it's good to have an idea of what you're sniffing. And so many of these fragrances are attached to a place. They really are transportive. They evoke something. And so this is Lost in Amalfi, so the southwest coast of Italy, Amalfi, the high cliffs overlooking the rocky shore. They also have a one or two note descript on the front of the box. So Lost in Amalfi is sea mist. And then on the back of the box, I'll read this to you. This is the scent story, which in this case says, awaken to the fragrance of freesia, lavender, and lime, enlivened and relaxed, siesta satisfied. Still with some of the sun and salt spray from before and ready for more. Find yourself where the days sparkle like the sea and another limoncello. Sounds really great, right? You can already picture yourself there. And beyond that, then they also have a description on the site and what I love, the top, middle, bottom notes. And so you're gonna get a little bit more out of each of those. And on the site, they mentioned for Lost in Amalfi, impressions of crystal clear water and zesty limoncello come from freesia, lime, and moss. A transcendent everyday luxury, it creates instant ambiance. Top notes, freesia, thyme, and tarragon. Middle notes, lavender and moss. And base notes of musk and patchouli. So a lot of interesting stuff going on there. Opening this up, you've got a black inside to the box. You have a bit of instructions there on candle care. And then I, these are post burn reviews. So I have burned both of these. Really pretty apothecary jar. Got a nice thick lip there on the bottom to sort of protect your services. And then you pop off the top and there is a rubber gasket in there for a good seal. And if you want to reuse the jars at the end. You can see here, this is the soy wax blend with those two wicks. I have not yet trimmed these, so they were a pretty healthy burn. I will say to get the full pull across, you do wanna make sure that you are lighting these for a couple of hours at a time to get that full pull. And with this to start, again, every home temperature drafts always different. I did put a little bit of aluminum foil around the edge to ensure it did fully pull out. And once that happened, it was a strong performer. And it is, these are the kind of candles where they're in the box and you can smell them even kind of through the gasket. They are strongly scented. Fairly simple. You got just the, the opaque creamy wax and then the glass house fragrances metallic print on there. And the label on the bottom gives you, of course, the name and the single description. So Lost in Amalfi Sea Mist. Performance, again, very strong throw. Good to see the two wick with soy. It takes, it's a bit heavier than paraffin. It's gonna take a bit longer to pull out. It can take longer to get the actual scent fragrance molecules in the air and projecting. The two wicks definitely help you with that. And the triple scent fragrance load here also helps. This is really unique because it is, again, sea mist. You sometimes think, oh, is it driftwood is going to be sort of your typical cologne. No, this is a very, it is a very unique balance of 
bright and fresh from your floral, your herbals, your limoncello, the lime, but there is a strong depth with that musk, with that moss. So I would say patchouli, I don't necessarily get, if it's patchouli, it's a very, very fresh patchouli. It's not super, super earthy. Definitely a, a solid mix of a kind of sheer glistening musk, but nothing that is too, too powdery or too heavy or overwhelming, but definitely that kind of musky, a bit seductive. Still a daytime candle. It is mid-afternoon on the coast of Amalfi. You have been on the beach, you've been outside, you've, you've had maybe a nice afternoon cocktail or brunch, and you have just that bit of salt on, on your skin or in your hair, and there's so much greenery around you. Again, the herbs from some thyme, some tarragon, the floral from lavender and freesia. Not heavy on the floral, but it does add sort of sun to it for me. Tarragon is not a note you get very often in fragrance. They say that tarragon sometimes will smell like sweet and spicy and almost have a bit of a celery or anise sort of fresh bite to it, which I which I could get here. Freesia is very sweet, very airy, almost some citrus in there. This is unique because the citrus almost comes through the herbal and the floral versus just having a heavy hit of bergamot or lemon zest on top. But it is certainly there. Like, it's just you're getting these sea breezes of all of the different fresh floral and fauna around you. But that moss, for me, really grounds this and makes it not only sort of somewhat marine, but the moss makes it feel mature and lush. It really adds that greenery all around you. And it's not just the herbal sort of astringent greenery you might get from some of your herbs or even your florals and your stems, but there's more of a wet green, slightly earthy vibe from being on those cliffs. So strong, bright. It's daytime, but it could go into to evening. It's like a late afternoon. Very fresh, very invigorating, but really just does feel, in some ways, it almost feels like a non-traditional sea or sea spray scent to me in a good way, in a unique way, and in, in sort of a new interpretation of what sea mist could look like. So really enjoy that one. And that is the US favorite, as of right now, at least. Then we go over to French Polynesia Islands, so kind of straight south-ish from Hawaii and east of Australia, New Zealand, so up and over. And this is a Taha'a Affair. And the notes on this one, vanilla, caramel. And then the notes on the back, northwest of nowhere in the turquoise belt of the South Pacific lies Taha'a, a perfectly lush green haven to sail to whenever. Vanilla bean, frankincense, and coconut layer together, and you're there in the warm, sweet air of the vanilla island. So Taha'a, in my little bit of research, has vanilla growing everywhere. And truly, you walk through the island and you're getting wafts of vanilla bean, the vanilla plant, the orchid that it grows into all throughout the island. So that's, I just love the idea of that. So it really does place you in Taha'a. On the website, it, it reads, ambrosial with heavenly caramel and coconut. It'll transport you to the beaches of Taha'a. Top middle bottom notes, top notes of pineapple, middle notes of coconut and fruit, base notes of caramel and vanilla. So this is interesting because it's not quite foodie. Vanilla caramel, you might think, oh, is this gonna be truly foodie? It is very much gourmand, but very unique in its gourmand. And here you can see this one has sort of that caramel colored wax. Same two wicks there, healthy burn performance. I didn't see any sooting. Again, once the pool came out there, the throw was wild, really room filling. And this one is interesting because at first when I sniffed it, it's one that based on the notes, I really wasn't sure what it would smell like. And it really plays the balance between edible because you certainly can smell the pineapple in there. You can smell coconut, though don't think your sunscreen coconut or your you know, coconut rums, things like that. A much earthier, more natural coconut meat. And the caramel is there and of course the vanilla. The vanilla I feel like is warm, it is round, it is deep, it is earthy. This is a really sultry, seductive candle. It's heavy, but in a good way. Heavy, I think, from that caramel base, it's not overly sweet, it's not cloying at all. It is a true sort of burnt caramel. Don't think, you know, of a flambe, don't think pineapple and coconut 
and caramel sauce drizzly ooey gooey. This is lush and exotic. So this is, you're walking through the island, there are pineapples around you, there's coconut around you, so you've got sort of some of the tropical fruits without being overly sweet. You're smelling more the plants versus biting into a fresh pineapple. And that vanilla is just enveloping rich, warm, golden. It's just so golden. You know, the, the caramel wax here, but it's just the, it it seems flowy and white and sheer and just gold throughout. Airy and light and movement, but with such depth. There is a deep earthiness to vanilla as well, where it's just somehow seductive and sultry, but it's just enough of those fruits to make it feel still fresh, not just a, a body fragrance. This one was beautiful burning. This one might be my favorite between the two if I had to choose, which was a little surprised because I love fresh and bright herbal. I'm all about that. Thyme, tarragon, lavender, like sign me up. But with this, there's something that is so different where this is not a fragrance that I typically would think, oh, that's something I want to go for. I'm not super gourmand. I think there's a lot of glasshouse fragrances that are like this where you smell it and you're like, I have never smelled anything like that. <laughs> it's their variation, their version of something, and it's so really, so unique. So for me, I, I really enjoy this one. It is island, it is exotic, but it could be also year-round scent because of enough depth to the caramel and vanilla with a little bit of that tartness from the, the pineapple juice right in the middle of it. Really enjoy both of these. Very unique, Very two very different interpretations of coastal, essentially kind of beachy, fragrances, southwest coast of Italy, and then of course, an island in the middle of French Polynesia. So again, I'm a fan of that. And I will say just very quickly, though I haven't done an in-depth sniff or comparison review on Christmas morning, this one is Spice Blood Orange and Pine. And this one here, really pretty with this red jar. This, this could end up being like a, a top 10 holiday fragrance for me. It is a beautiful blend of sort of a pomander pine. Let me know what you think. If you are familiar with glasses fragrances, what you would recommend I check out next, if you've smelled them, if you've purchased them. Of course, if you're in Australia, you have a lot of different scents that we don't have yet here in the US. Some really beautiful ones that are launching over there now that hopefully we will get here in the US when the season is appropriate for them for us here. So if you have any recommendations, I'm happy to hear them on other fragrances to check out with glass house fragrances. Let me know what you think, if you have any other questions and until next time, take care.